Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make your very own super cute little European 4-in-1 dangle break uh, not bracelets, earrings <laughs> um, for you to wear in your ear holes or wherever you like. Uh, let's get started. <laughs> so starting out, you can see over here I have, let me adjust the camera just a hair, a pair of 301 surgical steel hypoallergenic ear wires, some silicone rubber backs, two 16 gauge 5 16 rings, and then the rest of the rings that we are using here are 20 gauge 1 8 inch. There will be links down in the video description below where you can purchase your own rings. And I'm going to be setting some of them up with you here today just so you can see how I go about it. And bear with me because I'm doing this watching through the camera. So my depth perception is going to be a little off just to start. Um, <laughs> I think I'm probably going to have to peek around the camera maybe. So our first row here is going to consist of seven open rings. Four. Well, that one's lost. <laughs> Five. Six. And seven. Then our second row is going to be a row of five open. One, two, three, four. And then a row of three. There's one, two, three, and then just one. And so now we're going to start in on the closed rings. Oh, yeah. And we're going to want this guy to be open. Our big ring. Just like that. So I'm going to do two closed on all but the last of the first row. And whenever I'm closing a ring, I want it to look like there was never an opening there. So there's one, two. And there's one, and there's two, and especially since we're making these into earrings, we want to make sure that they have a nice, even, secure closure. And also, just the um, the amount of rings that I'm using here is totally up to you. Like, you could use more rings or less rings to just, ex I highly recommend experimenting both with different ring quantities as well as different ring sizes and even possibly, like, color combinations and um, combining different material types. Like, I mean, the possibilities here really are just endless. And another closed one on that one and then we can move on to the next row I enjoy getting all of my prep work um, out of the way that way once it's time to weave we can just weave I don't have to 
worry about opening or closing more to you know complete the design. And that's often when Randy and I are working together in inventory production. Um, he'll go through and set me up batches like this. You know, he'll set up like enough for like 10 earrings on a work surface and then I'll come through and weave it behind him. That way, I mean, we're both doing quite a bit of work, but it, it feels like less though, if that makes sense. Okay, on our last two closed rings. And also the material that I'm using here is aluminum, which I feel like for earrings is um, perfectly acceptable. It's a softer metal, but it's very lightweight. You could also, this design is lovely in stainless steel, but that gives it a little bit more of a weight. And honestly, my favorite is probably niobium. So what we're gonna do is we'll pick up this first ring, one open with two closed on it. And let me see if I can't. So here we are, one open with two closed on it. Still trying to get the grips with the, looking at what I'm doing through the camera. And then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to butterfly it. To where they're sitting like that. Because you don't want them sitting like this. That's incorrect. You want them like an opened book. And holding this here, I'm going to pick up the next string. One open with two closed on it. And I'm going to hook it through right here and then through here. And, I mean, it all falls apart into, you know, a mess, but it's good to get that practice right from the get-go. Let me see if I can't use smaller tipped pliers so that the pliers <clears throat> aren't getting in the way. So now from here, you can see I'm actually going to tuck this up underneath open those guys up and then butterfly this one off to the side see how that happened and after you get the first couple of rings going it'll be much more likely like much more inclined to stay in stay in place so we're gonna pick up the next one hook through from underneath and then in from up above Okay, so that pinged all across the room. So I think I'm going to have to open myself up a couple more rings. <laughs> that happens. It's okay. Just be patient with yourself. Oh, I found some of them. So now I just need one more closed ring. Oh, goodness. I've had that happen before where it just scatters all of the rings that I already have set up. It is so maddeningly frustrating. And yeah, I don't think there's a way that I can have my pliers be less in the way. I'll try my best, though. Okay, so let's try this again. <laughs> Getting that one nice and open. Now, you can totally see here, though, how it looks. Not on the ground, but on our work surface. It's kind of just being difficult. So, with it being difficult, I'm just going to get in there, kind of open that ring off to the side. Because sometimes you just need to like tap it and drop it a bit. There we go. So that one ring there is the one that's being weird, so i got to get it off of there. No, it's not. Okay. So these guys are going to get blade open and then these guys are gonna get splayed open just like that and so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come in through there and then through there and now I'm gonna close it
and really until we start getting some second rows on here this first ring is going to keep wanting to flop around weird um we'll get the hang of it let's just play that one open just like that mad props on the s8 zoom ability by the way this is like mega high quality <laughs> um like y'all can count the ink in my fingernails <laughs> okay so now just to stay on camera um so we've got another one open with two closed on it and i'm gonna hook through here and hook through there and you can really see a pattern is starting to form here Displaying that open, where you can really start to see some of the rings are laying this direction, and some of them are laying in that direction. Um, boop, boop, boop. But yeah, so we want to keep inserting from above to below through here, then coming up from below to above through here, and then closing it right there so to demonstrate again and we'll be getting lots of two earrings worth of demonstration out of this so uh, just as always be patient with me be patient with yourself we've got this so I'm going to come in from above and then coming up from below just like that and then we're going to close it And then you can splay that open. And now what you don't want to do is come in from below on this one. And then come in from below on this one. Like that is incorrect. As you can see. <laughs> so in from above and then in from below. And then close, hold it, splay it open, and now we're going to put in our last ring on this row, just the one open. Okay, so it's going to come in from right here, and then up from below, and close. that happens it's okay that's why we practice on aluminum and not sterling silver so now it's all laying out proper that's some micro mail y'all <laughs> like if I had a coin on me or a ruler next to me or something I just, I want to be able to demonstrate to y'all the size of this. Oops. So it's not the smallest micro mail I've ever done, but it's, it's about as small as I like to get for the most part before it starts to shave good years off of my life. <laughs> So it does a pretty cool demonstration, I think, with the ruler. Okay, so now we're going to come up, we're coming to our next row where we have the uh, one open with one closed on it. So I'm gonna grab one open with one closed and coming in here we want to follow the same pattern so we're going to be coming up from underneath through these two so there's one and two just like that it makes me feel like I'm all thumbs looking at it through the camera so please forgive my clumsiness 
Then you close it. So see how it's sitting like that? And so now we're going to take the next one open with one closed on it. And I'm going to insert through the top of this ring. And then below this one. Mm, let's, let's go on the ring, shall we? Yeah, below that one. And then from below on this one. So that's how it's looking. And you may want to try this out on much larger rings to start with, because this can be a bit of a pain. Let's get it back on the table so you can see what it's looking like. And if you're having problems with it, just tap it and kind of poke it around a bit. Sometimes it'll just fall right into place. Sometimes you have to hold it down with your finger and then poke it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Turning it back around this way. So that's what it's looking like. And so I'm going to grab our next open. And I like to have them be pretty generously opened for this. And if you're having trouble with it, just go ahead and take off that closed ring so that you're just working with the open. And then this might make it a little easier for us to see. We're going to hook through on this one. And then we're going to go right across the, uh, the aisle, so to speak, to that one. And then we're going to hook one more on there and then we're going to close it oh don't <sighs> okay so now i'm gonna unthread what i did because one of the rings hopped out right off i don't know if y'all noticed but um okay so i'm gonna rehook that one then right through there and then I'm going to hook one more onto it. And then we're going to put on that closed ring. And now we're going to close that too. Now again, this one ring over here it's just gonna be floppy and weird. That's just what he's doing with his life. We'll come back to that. Um, so don't get hung up on that because it'll all be okay in the end. So we're gonna hook through this one, and then this one, and then that one. Sorry, I don't mean for my fingers to be in the way. There we are. So I'm gonna close it. And now we're on our last open with no closed on it. I'm going to hook through one and two. Now you can see this guy down here is being all weird. So we'll just flip that around like that. Now what would have been incorrect, or at least not what we're going for, is if we had flipped this guy around like this then hooked them on. Do you see how that's not right? Compared to just flipping it around. And then hooking up through. And again, it's going to take a sorry. It's going to take a little bit of poking to get it to all lay right here to start. But we'll get there. There we go. So that's how it's coming along. Now the next row is the three open with two closed on two of them. And so we're going to hook through one 
and two. Easier said than done sometimes. And close it. And I'm gonna grab the next one. Hook through right there. Now again, on this one, you're going to want to make sure that this ring here is laying in the same direction that these rings are. Because if he were laying, oh, how would he lay? Like that. That is incorrect. See how it doesn't repeat the pattern? So just knock him right back over. Just like that. So I'm going to pick this up. And I'm real lucky that sometimes the rings just lay the way they're supposed to lay uh, without getting too complicated on me. So I'm just going to hook through right there and then through that one and that one. And I'm going to close it. And then our next ring is just one open with no closed on it. So I'm going to hook through this little guy. And then from below on that one. And then below on that one. And now we're going to do the last, these two rings right here, just hanging off the end. Boop and boop. I'm going to hook this last open ring with no closed on it through the two of them. I hear you, chicken. And then I'm going to close it. Oops. And so from here, you can see that made just a very nice little uh, chainmail triangle. And you can see how it reduces this way. It would also be reducing this way. You know, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then a row of one, two, three, four, five, six. I do it this way because I like the way it's shaped, but you could always add one more ring onto here and one more ring onto here. That way it goes from a row. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take our large ring and we're actually just going to feed that right up through all these little rings that hang down, all six of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it just gathers them right on up. Let me grab my bigger pliers. And then I'm also going to thread this right onto my ear hook. And then I'm going to close it. Nice, good closure. And that's one of the earrings. Now, I've also done a design where it's one of these hanging off the bottom and then another one hanging off the top and then the ear hook attaches to like right here and those make a very lovely like long full dangle but I find that these earrings are pretty good for just um like daily wear the other ones are a little bit more you know extra I guess <laughs> which I mean I think you know when's the time and place for that and I'm like always everywhere are you serious like but some people you know like especially if you work like in an office environment I guess you might not want uh you know awesome earrings all the time <laughs> okay so let's weave that next one I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more that way you don't have to fight to stay on screen as much So we have one open with one closed on it. You know, it was just really nice with it zoomed in, though. Okay. 
and we've got we closed the one open and then butterflied it so we're picking up another one threading through threading through closing it getting into position changing out the pliers okay Hook in, look through there, oops, look through there. Well, it slipped, but it went on right, that's nice. <laughs> Butterflying them, that step is so important. And then from below, and then from above. Then butterfly him. And then, let's see if I can grip somewhere different. This one actually needs opened up just a little bit more. Through below, and then through above. Close it right back down. We've got two more rings for this row. Below and above. Sorry, I don't mean for my thumb to get in the way. Now it's our last string, and I'm going to show you kind of an alternate method um, this time. That if that one weird ring on the end is just bothering you, what we can do is we can take this, and we can go ahead and thread this large ring on. But also, a really subtle design element, as you can see, right now, they're mirrored because this ring on this one is the same as this ring on this one, but they're butterflied. So, I mean, we could take it and just flip it over and have them both be going the same direction. But I think for something like earrings, where it's going to be one on either side of your face, um, that symmetry, that mirror symmetry, um, is very flattering. I mean, and it's so, so subtle. Most people might never notice it. But if you're a sucker for details... <laughs> Um, and since you're making them, you know, why not? So this one's all tangled up funny. Let's tap it a whole bunch until it sits right. Okay, so there's that side. Now... There we go. So now what we can do... If I want to go ahead and just take, um, I want to make sure they're mirror imaged. Okay, so not that way. That way. So I'm going to hook through. All six. And I'm going to go ahead and hook my ear hook on. Or my ear wire, whatever you want to call it. And close it. So now, whenever you're working on it, you've got somewhere that you can pick it up by and it'll make everything go lay in the correct position. So now I've got one open with one closed, and I'm going to hook through one and two, and then close it. And make sure it's laying correctly. So again, like this right here, it's not laying correctly. You want, there it goes, flipped it right over. 
Knit one open with one closed, coming up from below through two. Coming up from below. We're trying to, geez. There we go. And then one, two. And then close. And then grabbing another one. Looking through. Looking through. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at pattern recognition and at kind of just understanding and being more intuitive about where the rings go. Please keep in mind, I've been making jewelry and costumes professionally for a decade at this point. Um, so uh, please don't feel like, oh, I can't do it. It's like, no, 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 you didn't see me when I was first learning. It was a mess. <laughs> but if you like it, just keep at it and you'll get better. So there's that row. And now we're going to do our row of three open. So again, again one, two, close knit, hook in one, two, three. And also, another thing to keep in mind, this is just the way I go about it. Um, there are lots of other teachers here on YouTube, and you could go to mailartisans.org um, and see some different written out tutorials. It's like, if this method isn't working out for you, don't hesitate to try something else. Don't feel like, well, I didn't do it the way that Vaughn does it, so I don't do it right. It's like, no, this is, there's as many different ways to weave this as there are people to weave it. So... And it's not really even about the end res or how you get there. It, it is the end result, you know. As long as you're not compromising quality, do whatever it takes. <laughs> so there's our last one, and then close it. So there are some very cute little European four-in-one aluminum earrings, and I go ahead and just slide on these earbacks. There you are. Hey guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial. As usual, I do hope it was helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below in the comment area. Um, if you are on social media, please, and you like make something, or you have a question, or you want to tag me, please feel free to tag me, to share, to comment, to um, post it to my Facebook wall. Like, I'd love to see what you guys make from this tutorial. Now there's some really cool, like I talked about a little bit about like if you did like, like if you could visualize that where it's like longer. Um, I've done necklaces where it's a much larger center ring but with a pendant coming off in each direction and one off the bottom with like a teardrop coming off of it. Um, you could do circlets that way or handful. I mean there's, the possibilities are endless here you guys. You can also, you could hang little teardrops off of it. You could hang little beads trim, little chain trim. That might be super cute. Um, so if you guys like my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, um, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways and in my, um, I do monthly craft crates and all different kinds of stuff. And to just support the creation of more videos like these, um, this one and others, uh, then please check me out on Patreon. There will be a link down in the video description below. Um, and if you would like to support our work but don't want to become a patron, just all I can ask is that you enjoy my videos. Maybe share them with your friends if you have some friends that you think might be inclined to uh, become craftier. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, thank you guys so much. For hanging out with me and for watching my videos and for all of your words of encouragement and um, inspiration and like y'all have blown my mind with the huge reception that we've had here on YouTube and on Patreon and on Facebook and everything so let's keep this ball rolling and let's get our craft on so I'll see you guys around uh, happy crafting bye <laughs>